Hi, this is Terry Peterson with the Charleston Agent. Uh, my wife Amy and I run the team together, and Michelle is uh, obviously one of our team members. And so the reason you're getting this video is that, well, basically, I kind of run the, the back-end numbers and computer side, so to speak, of the team. My career started off as a commercial real estate and investment appraiser. And so essentially, I like to look at numbers on any of the homes that my team and or their clients are taking a look at just to get a solid vetting of, is this a home with a, you know, are they asking within range? Are they asking too much or is it just a steal to be had? And so that's what this video is, is to give you a brief walkthrough of my valuation process on the home, let you know where it stands, where it lands. Um, but of course, at the end, it is your home and of course your money. So in the end, the decision is yours to be made. So to begin with, um, in looking at the home you guys had interest in at 2141 South Dollarton Circle, we have to begin to look at a set of comparable homes to get a good price range on. Now the neighborhood that that home is in is a relatively small neighborhood, so we don't have very many comps. We will of course lean most heavily on the comps within that neighborhood, whereas the subject property is right there. Nonetheless, we did need to reach outside the neighborhood just to get enough numbers to see okay, we don't want one or two homes to completely skew our numbers. So let's look at a broader range. Um, for one thing, we stay on the same side of 17, um, basically not go too far distance away, not go all the way down to waterfront, obviously. But just, again, stay within a, a very, very moderate range of the property we're looking at. These other homes we're looking at all have a relatively close size range to the, to the home that you guys are looking at, um, relatively close age range. And so from here, what we do, I'm going to pause it and we're going to move on to another chart. And here we have where those comparable homes land on a pricing graph uh, to give us a, a good feel for where the value of this home lands and our, have they priced it correctly or not. Now, essentially, um, long story short, what my model says is this home lands right here in the mid to high 290 range. Um, granted, let me explain to you what you were seeing on the screen here. We're seeing green, red, and yellow dots. The red dots are sales that have occurred within the past year within that area that I outlined. The yellow dots are homes that are currently pending, so we know that they have a contract on them, but they have not closed on the sale yet, so we don't know their final sale price. And the green dots are the ones that are currently for sale. Now, one thing worth noting is that there's not very much competition right now on the market. So this only dot we have on the screen is the home y'all are looking at um, at 2114. And so now what we do is we look at where do these other dots land and then we price out, basically look at the price per square foot. And that comes out to this, excuse me, this blue bar right here across the screen. So that is essentially the, the average price per square foot across all these sales. Now the slightly wider band on our screen, kind of the blue area region we have going on here, is statistically kind of, it's not exactly one standard deviation, but that's one way to think about it. Basically that is the approximate range that homes in this area should be selling within. And then you have the range outside of that. Now there's various reasons for homes to fall outside of this range. Something, you know, to take a particular note of this home you guys are looking at, well-maintained hardwood floors, uh, decent, very nice updated kitchen, as well as a very nice back um, outdoor area, back door space. So not all homes had that, but most homes in that one neighborhood you guys are looking did have some of those qualities about them as far as being um, something's been updated about them and having some decent backyard space. A uh, few, if none of them, I don't believe, had that whole uh, like sunroom, hangout, and porch area as the home you guys are looking at. But looking at these dots specifically, here's another one that is on Dollarton. Let's see, that's one Parkdale that's nearby, but not on Dollarton. This one's on Dollarton as well as this one. So, <clears throat> excuse me, what that tells us is that homes from that neighborhood, they are netting prices above the average for the area. They have basically maintain their value better and that neighborhood is basically more of a place people are looking to move than other homes within that immediate area. So what that does say is that home does, one, they priced it very well. They priced it above the line, which you expect, because as with most homes, they should be expecting a little negotiating in their price, but they didn't price it clearly pie in the sky out of range. Nonetheless, looking at the numbers and looking at the ranges on here of what other Dollarton homes are going for, I would expect this home to sell for the mid to high 290s. Now these other homes we see here are either just drastically different in size, 
nonetheless, it still follows the line. Or another one, Dollarton. Again, it follows the line. It is still above the line. Let's see, and we already picked out. Let's see, this one here, it's a nearby home. It's above the line. It was well maintained on the inside. Some of these homes here were just not as modified or updated or maintained, which caused them to fall below the line. And so again, what this tells us is that statistically, this home was priced within range of the market, and as well as uh, basically it is priced to sell, you know, within range of what the other homes in the neighborhood are selling for. Now here, this digs a little bit deeper into the numbers. Um, it's worth um, lightly touching on how each of these numbers affect uh, the number for 21, 41 dollars in circle. So one, it gives you the, the ranges basically that I searched within um, to, to look for comps for the home. First thing we see here is seasonality adjustment. Now, many times, especially whenever we're, we're gonna be the selling agent, clients ask, well, should I sell during the summertime because more people move during the summertime or should I, you know, uh, not sell, not wait to do that? Well, seasonality adjustment takes that into effect. It looks at um, either homes that sold in the wintertime and then sold maybe another time during the summertime and homes within the same market and says, how much seasonality is there to our market? And what it does show basically is that, yes, there's a seasonality to the market. You do net generally a higher price in the summer and less in the winter, but it is incredibly minor. Um, on a near $300,000 home, the difference is $1,000. Essentially, you're gonna pay that difference if you held a home till the summertime to sell it then anyway. So it's just basically to let you know that at wintertime or summertime, that does not make a substantial difference in the price you're gonna either get in buying a home or get in selling a home. Now, next one here is market conditions adjustment. That kind of looks from a micro to a macro level of this home that you guys are looking at. How does its neighborhood compare to surrounding neighborhoods? How do the surrounding neighborhoods that make up West Ashley compare to the rest of Charleston? So again, from a small view to a larger view. And in general, this neighborhood is market-wise doing better than many of the surrounding neighborhoods in the area around West Ashley and Charleston. So it's a good thing. It means that home is in a sought after location. And finally, property adjustments. Property adjustments are something that I do on the back end of my numbers to get very granular on when I look at the comps, how does this one specifically compare to the other comparables on the market? And again, how well it's been maintained, the features of the home, what updates it has, its living space, its backyard space, things like sunrooms or porches, those are what contribute to this. And essentially all the homes within the Dollarton neighborhood uh, have a, an upward adjustment compared to their neighbors, which are not quite as nice. So again, makes it, in short, it's a nice neighborhood. Um, the rest here is just a summary of what we discussed on the previous page that brings us home into a mid to high 290s range as far as value. Um, statistically, this neighborhood having 19 days on market, that is low for Charleston as a whole. Charleston as a whole is around 35 to 40 days on market on average. So for the stats to say this neighborhood has 19 days on market, again, speak strongly for that neighborhood. That means homes don't stay on the market very long. This home's been on the market five days as of right now, but again, don't expect it to sit around for too much longer. And then the sales price adjustment. As always, you, know, you list at one price, you end up closing at another price, a little bit lower than that. And uh, that's just basically, whenever you look at the numbers of what houses were listed for versus what did they sell for, this is telling you that homes on average are selling for over 98% of asking price, which uh, this also goes back to speaking strongly for the market conditions in the area there, that whatever the asking price is, the seller shouldn't have to expect to negotiate more than one and a half to 2% below that asking price in selling their property. So that could make for a little bit of wiggle room there. Essentially, they're asking 309. Um, going off of this stat, that means that they should be expecting maybe around a 304 number. Um, nonetheless, uh, in my opinion, the number should be the high 290s. So, uh, you know, take both into effect. One thing to realize here, there is no single one right number for a home. Um, there's always the number the seller wants. There's always the number the buyer wants. Those two numbers are never the same to begin with. They have their motivations as well as you have yours. So again, what I, what I don't have here is one single accurate number for their home because there is no one single accurate number. It is just a matter of, now you guys have some data, now you guys have some information to feed off of. Um, so maybe watch this video one more time. Um, think about what it is that you, know, you guys would wanna go in for if you wanna make an offer on this home. 
and have a conversation with Michelle about it. If anything about this was confusing or brought any questions to mind, do not hesitate to ask. We'd be glad to clarify and uh, look forward to doing business with you guys. Thank you.